During the long march by the Chinese workers and peasants Red Army, Commander in Chief of the Red Army Zhu De published a well-known proclamation of the Chinese workers and peasants Red Army, stating the proposition of the Chinese communists to treat different ethnic groups equally and seek mutual respect. General He Long, who led the Red Army to cross the Jingsha River in Beijing, specially presented a silk scroll reading Xinsheng Fanzu to Zhongdian Guihua Temple, now the Songzhen Ling Lamasri in Shangri-La. This scroll is still collected at the Military Museum of the Chinese People's Revolution in Beijing. It stands for the deep affection of the Red Army for Tibetan compatriot and is a witness of the unity between Han and Tibetan people. For a century, equality and unity and progressing and development are not just the slogans of the revolutionary political party and the ruling party. In multi-ethnic places like Beijing, such a Chinese-style modernization path with people as a core has long been recognized, practiced and shared. Zhejiang is a multi-ethnic village near the Lantang River. Here, a variety of religious beliefs coexist in harmony, and a different ethnic cultures mingles. Zhejiang Catholic Church is listed by the State Council as a cultural relic site under state-level protection. As a local villager, Hongsheng goes to church as a regular ritual in a short break after work on Sunday. Hongxing is a descendant of the Tibetan and Nashi ethnic groups, and his wife He Yuchong is a Nashi woman. In May, the grape trees in their farm are sprouting new branches, which is the key period for the fruition. So Hongxing and his wife need to take care of the trees and prune them frequently. Today, the missionaries are long gone, but the vineyard has been maintained to this day, basking in the sunshine and rain of the Plato Canyon. Vineyards all across Yunnan, as represented by Di Qing, are attracting wine industry giants from home and abroad. Hongxing's wine store is small, neighboring the Sejong Catholic Church. This small shop welcomes tourists from different places, and they can taste good wine and understand the local winemaking history. In 1999, Hongxing inherited his father's winemaking skills and started to make wine with rose honey grape as raw material. My father, I've been doing this for a long 
，一朵红花不说话，万次千红才说话说。所有的人，呃，隔壁邻居和自己的亲朋好友，都热心的交个。The rose honey grape wine brewed by the traditional method is pure and mellow, with lasting aftertastes. The annual output is less than 2,000 bottles, and the supply falls short of demand. Oh, tomorrow's journey needs to be seven to eight hours. The reason is safety issues. 安全措施主要首先要靠那个听从这个向导，一对一对的，不要拉开这个距离。From May to September, while the grapes grow quietly in the valley, Hongxing takes another row as a mountaineering guide, which is also an important job. 然后我们明天早上大概在七点半左右，我们要去早点出发。Cizhong village is by the side of the Lantang River, and the Bilu Snow Mountain lies between the Lantang River and Nujiang River. In this season, Hongxing will lead backpackers to climb the snow mountain. Hiking for seven or eight hours every day is a big challenge for first-time visitors. Fortunately. There is a resting place halfway up the Bilu Snow Mountain. This building is my own construction. The construction of the buildings are all from the village of Jiangbei. It took me more than a year to build it. From the beginning to this point, in this building, the first day of the building was the first day. So I still... 我心里面一直想过，要不在这里建一个小驿站，特别方便了嘛。It takes three days and two nights to conquer the Bilu Snow Mountain, and with this cottage, there is no longer need for hikers to carry tents for carry tents for camping. Hongxing treats them like his family, and they love the scenery of the mountains and rivers. And local ethnic customs. In people's eyes, my home is rich and prosperous. But in my eyes, the mountains and the rivers, even the trees and the flowers, are the fruits of life. Hongxing wishes. 就是想让更多的人能够品尝到葡萄酒的芳香，感受到这片山川的美At 7.30 in the morning, it's time for sutra chanting at this Buddhist academy. This is also a compulsory course for the students every morning. My family is in Bilejji, in the Dauqin Xian, in the Dauqin Xian. I was born in 1984, in the year of 1984. When I was very young, my father brought me to the village. I really wanted to go to the village. My father didn't want to go to the village. I wanted to go to the village. More than ten years ago, 
Tenzin was also a student here. After becoming a monk, Tenzin has never stopped studying. With more than 20 years of Buddhism study, Tenzin obtained Toramba degree in 2018 from Advanced Buddhism Academy in Beijing. He came back here and became a scripture lecturer. The Yunnan Institute of Tibetan Buddhist Studies, located in Shangri-La, is a school dedicated to training Tibetan Buddhist talents. Tibetan medicine has been preserved for thousands of years, but under the feudal serfdom, it was mastered by very few people and was almost on the verge of extinction. Since the 1980s, the once mysterious Tibetan medicine has been gradually incorporated into formal education, entering into the new period of prosperity. In 2021, the first Tibetan medicine class was set up by Yunnan Institute of Tibetan Buddhist Studies. The scripture teacher Tenzin is attending this class as a temporary attendee today. When Tenzin was 20 years old, his parents died of fatal illness one after another. It is a great regret for him. And he keeps thinking that if he had mastered the medical skill, the result would be completely different. After a completion of the Tibetan medicine course, the students choose to go back to the grassroots rural areas, contributing to the local health course and the people's livelihood. In the past, theology was everything education meant, and ordinary people could not observe any scientific ideas at all. But today, religious culture and modern civilization are closely related to almost everyone's life. With the progress of the times, students trained in Shangri-La Buddhist Institute have constantly updated their understanding of religion, science, and culture. Tenzin's life is a constant fight for self-improvement through studies. My dream is Benzilan is located at the foot of White Horse Snow Mountain. On this land that the Chinese workers and peasants' Red Army used to walk, the raging Jingsha River becomes much broader right from here. In May, the canyon is full of blossoming flowers. Teaching welcomes people from all over the world with open arms. Following the advent of spring, Estelle is also ready to greet her guests from afar. Hey, oh,
呃，有农民做 T 现在。啊、嗯。OK 了，欢迎。Astel used to be an architect in France. When she first came to Yunnan 30 years ago, she was fascinated by this marvelous province. I'm French, and then I have some link with Yunnan because. France, the lower altitude and mountain in France, like here, and the uh, Alps is like these mountains, and uh, here in Benzilan it's hot, so it's uh, remember me the Provence. This three-story Tibetan-style hut is Astel's home in Yunnan. Every morning, she takes care of plants in her courtyard, just like she always did back in France. I grew a lot of flower in my garden to push the side of Provence here. Like uh, I have olive tree, I have basil, I have rosemary, thyme, and uh, lavender and uh, laurel. Uh, to make the, my kitchen, my kitchen, I, I cook uh, as my grandma cook too, like uh, Provence uh, cooking. Ten years ago, Estelle visited Benzilan for the first time. The air smells so familiar to her that she recalled her own childhood. She made an unlikely decision to settle here in Benzilan. She rented a Tibetan residence and transformed it into a homestay of her own. When uh, I renew this house, I thought about how to, in the material, in the rough material, you have a kind of soul. So I won't keep it. I tried to keep it to... I didn't change too much things. Today, a group of new tourists will come and check in here. Estelle went out early to buy some groceries as usual. No, baka. Okay. Having lived in Benzilan for years, Estelle has learned how to communicate with locals in simple Chinese words. And the people here are already habitual to mingling with such an old French lady in the depths of Chinese mountains. I really like to be here with uh, the people around me because they are very uh, friendly. They adopt me like a, really a, like a child in a family and it's uh, incredible for me and, and they give me so much that I'm uh, very happy for that. Estelle always cooks for tourists staying in her guest house. She offers authentic French food for them. It is a special and romantic moment for Benzilan, where people share French food in such a Tibetan-style house. Ten years on, Estelle has become a part of the local community. She hopes that every tourist coming to Benzilan will be amazed by it, just like she was. When uh, I have guests who arrive from outside, foreigner or Chinese from another province or my home, home is not a product, it's an exchange. 
I won't receive my guest like friend. Estelle is greatly attracted by Di Qing's unique culture. She feels at home in Di Qing, not only because of the natural environment, but also the care and connections between people and the understanding, appreciation, and inclusiveness of different cultures. Many people ask me, but uh, what do you want to do after? I said, uh, but it's my home here. And uh, it's not a hotel, it's not uh, like only a, a business. Okay, I make a small business, but uh, but it's more than this. It's uh, I have some roots in my feet who grow here. Diverse cultures harmoniously coexist and develop here in Dijing. It is open to every visitor, no matter what his skin color is or which country he is from. The inclusiveness originates from the charm and confidence of the Chinese civilization, which dates back 5,000 years and is even more vigorous today. The main peak of Mary Snow Mountain is called Kawakapu by the local people. It is the highest peak in Yunnan province. No human being has ever conquered it yet. His name is Peng Jiansheng, also known as Lopsan Dudun. His father is Han nationality, while his mother is Tibetan. This photographer, who is passionate about nature and ecology, is praying to the holy mountain early in the morning. Today, Peng Jiansheng is going to the dry hot valley of the Lantang River at the foot of Mary Snow Mountain, looking for a recently identified animal called the Jedi Dragon Lizard. <laughs> Yeah, this is a kind of lizard unique to Lantang River Basin, which has been living on this planet for millions of years. However, it is by no means an easy job to see it for real. After walking along the bumpy roads filled with thorny rocks for more than an hour, Peng Jiansheng finally found a greenish creature on his toe. He approached quietly and pressed the shutter gently. The first shot of the day. But soon, the lizard senses the human presence. While Peng Jiansheng devotes himself to wildlife photography, his longtime friend Fang Zhendong, a botanist and descendant of the Han and Nashi ethnic groups, is leading his team to collect wild rhododendron samples in the depths of Potatsuo National Park 
150 kilometers away. Fang Zhendong was the inaugural director of Shangri-La Alpine Botanical Garden. Twenty years ago, he decided to build an alpine botanical garden on this mountain. The ancient tea horse road snakes through right here. In 1950, the Chinese People's Liberation Army, inheriting the glorious tradition of the Red Army, also passed here in order to liberate Tibet peacefully. For more than 20 years since this establishment, the garden is home to endangered plant species in the area where the three rivers converge. This植物叫中殿刺梅，它是世界蔷薇树里面花型最大的一个野生种。呃，中殿刺梅呢，也是当地的特有种。呃，又是我们香格里拉的市花。那么这个植物是在十多年前，那个一个工程项目影响的一个
Here is the Ching, the homeland for Jedi Dragon Lizards, for the Snobnose Monkey Mother and her baby, and for the rescue Rosa Devrika. From the highest altitude of 6,740 meters to the lowest 1,486 meters, the Ching provides a safe haven for more than 2,700 kinds of creatures with its pleasant climate and inclusive ecological environment. It is the common home of us and them, and the life community of humans and the nature. Di Qing is the eternal Shangri-La. Although the Red Army's presence here has become a thing of the past, it leaves us the spirit of perseverance and ceaseless struggling, which will be passed on from generation to generation. Our ancestors passed down their aspirations to us, which is to maintain peaceful coexistence and harmonious development of different ethnic groups here. Their wish turned into a reality. The beautiful land is where the dreams of all ethnic groups come true, and where cultures from home and overseas interact. The people from different backgrounds thrive here individually and as a whole. They are open-minded and inclusive, adhering to the tradition and eager to innovate. They take great pride in the shared task of safeguarding their homeland and making it better. Living by the Jingsha River and at the foot of the Rocky Mountains, people in Dijing is grateful to life, revere nature, and respect history and culture. They are joining hands to create their own happy life at present and usher an even brighter future. The hard-won peace and happiness initiated by their forefathers' endeavor against extreme adversities is here to stay. For generations to come.